Right, so um, this is a brief talk about a small um, set of events that Emcosm has been doing along with a few other people called Chickpack, which is basically introducing communities to Verilog as opposed to various other languages. So this all started a couple of years ago. We um, were in London and organized a weekend where people start from starting with not understanding what Verilog is at all and going all the way up to Julius explaining how OpenRisk works. <laughs> um, we had 20 or so, oh, maybe more, maybe. around 20. But, yeah. Okay, around 20 people, you know, all with D0 and Nanos, running Verilog. And this is interesting for us for two reasons. One, well, it's nice, you know, running these sorts of workshops. And also, we learnt a lot about how to run a workshop from running it. In particular, installing tools on the day is a massive pain in the backside. <laughs> Especially when everybody has very different versions of tools. Tool vendors like moving boxes around. So, where is this button? Unfortunately, 95% of the time, the answer from the experts is, I don't know, I only use the command line because the good is a pile of crap. Um, and also, people like Max, but FPGA vendors haven't heard of them, so the tools just don't run. Perhaps another one I can add here is never underestimate the um, variability of people's setup and ways of doing things. <laughs> when you think you've thought of all the ways of getting a tool installed and running it, Think again, because somebody will find a way you haven't thought of. And also, you know, for in the morning trying to explain, say, all of this, perhaps we need more step-by-step -step instructions. So then, uh, earlier this year, we ran a second chip hack, and we, we learned from this first one, so we have more step-by-step -step instructions, lot, lot, um, a lot more nice diagrams, more stuff on open risk over the afternoon. Obligatory mention of um, Fusoc. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, okay, I know you've had fun with the GUI, but no, this is how work is really done. And this was a lot more successful than the first one. About the sometime between the first and the second, um, we posed this question. We're teaching people how to program, but we're teaching people how to program things sequentially. And the world isn't sequential, the world is parallel. So why not teach Verilog as an alternative before people are taught that the world is sequential and that's all the world will ever be? Would you mean less threats? So we had a um, work experience unit over the summer, um, who also came with us to the second chip hack, to turn all of this workshop into a prepackaged Here's a, here's a course that you could deliver to a group of 13 and 14 year olds and teach them very well. Um, so, in the next week or so, we should have a, a nice document that will explain, you know, step by step how to introduce someone to Verilog and, well, then open risk as well. And that is my very quick talk. Well, it, it's probably worth mentioning that all the resource that is put up is, is intended for people to be able to go and reuse themselves. Yes. You know, if they want to run, if they want to run a workshop, or you know, the, the idea is that we're putting up a bunch of resources which you can go along and, and reference and, and reuse freely. Um, I think the plan was to also film the entire thing, so maybe you don't even need to know much about it. You can kind of replay. Yes, we have, we have the videos from the yes. Yeah. So. So the teaching material is available uh, for everybody to both learn and teach but yeah. Yeah. with their material. Yeah. Great. So did I get it correct that you, you haven't run the workshop for the teens yet? You're going to run it for... We, we haven't yet. We're still in the, you know... There's negotiation with the local school yeah. um, to, who um, have one IT teacher who's just been sacked by all accounts. So they're a bit thin resources. So it's what allows to go in after schools and help Dan who's the guy who did this. But political uh, things aside, how, how did you change the technical stuff? How have you... How, 
A lot of it is the language, which yep. is, I can't write for teenagers, Dan can. I mean, some of his language is most peculiar, but evidently makes sense to teenagers. And the refer I don't get the cultural references at all in this document. Um, uh, <laughs> but, so there's an element of that. There is also an element of confidence of, not a, some 50-year-old has told me I can do it, but here is a fellow 15-year-old you know, who has done it. Um, so there, there is a, a fair element of that. And what we do need to do is to take it into schools as an after-school, probably as an after-school club, to prove it out and prove it, prove it, um, prove it will work. Um, and so we are hoping to persuade the local school to let us come in and run an after-school club, teaching people how to do FPGA uh, design. But the content will be pretty much the same as you've done the it, it, Yes, it is. It's, it's trying to fill in the bits that... There are some things that older people know because they've just been around a computer a bit longer. Uh, that aren't taken as assumptions, and there are some things that people found hard when they're older that are easy when they're a teenager. Um, it, it will get better, I'm sure, once we've run it two or three times. And again, the idea is it's a resource, is we're not a training company, we, company, we do this for fun and games, um, but we want people to pick this up and develop it and run their own things from it. Cool. All right.